Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, I'm swimming in glue. I've decided to shed my outer shell and still come to the workshop. Uh, I'm doing more of mental gymnastics today as opposed to brand force work, so there was no need for that heavy blue coverall. What I'm doing today is figuring out how to glue all the wood pieces together so that I maximize the wood usage and minimize the wood waste. And of course, everything can be summarized into this little piece of floorboard. I know it doesn't make much sense now, so let me explain, <laughs> or at least try to. I begin by grouping things according to size, and by size I mean length. Uh, that way everything is uh, somewhat within the same range and I can get the maximum usage of the wood that way. Uh, if we recall our cheat sheet, our measurements are 5 by 8 squares and 6 by 10 squares and 8 by 13. So this is the sample of the uh, 5 by 8 boards. This is the pattern that starts with maple and ends with maple. And this is the alternating one that begins with cherry and ends with cherry. That way when I cut pieces across the width, I can simply take a piece and substitute it with one here. And that's going to give me that alternating pattern. Uh, so then I decided to measure things and put things into perspective here. So this particular side is going to give me seven strips and this one is going to give me six. So I'm kind of uh, one short here and two short here. So what to do, what to do, what to do. When I was inspecting the wood, I found a piece that has a missing sliver right here and I couldn't properly repair it. So I was wondering what to do with it. And then the idea dawned on me. What if I glue six? And we know the missing piece is right here. And when we go to our cheat sheet, or in this case, cheat floorboard, uh, and we draw the sequence right here, with this being the missing piece, then I'm thinking, what if I cut away the maple piece? So that's going to give me the two missing uh, cherry to cherry strips that I need for here. And the next uh, strip that I cut, I can simply cut away the cherry and that's going to give me the maple to maple piece that I'm missing here. So that way, uh, these are now fully 5 by 8 and I can simply swap the patterns to get to the checkered board. And that's going to leave me with three, possibly three, uh, pieces of cherry to maple pattern which I'm gonna use for my 6x10 boards and the way I was doing that is find similar uh, length of boards that uh, give me something that's missing so in my case uh, one board that is 37 centimeters long that's gonna give me eight uh, strips so I need to take two from here to add to the sequence right there to get 6x10 and then I have boards that are 41 centimeters that will give me nine uh, strips. So that means the remainder is added here and that's gonna give me the full six by 10 board and then I can again swap patterns. And now I have to do the same exercise for the remainder of the wood pieces that I have. Uh, I'm going to be gluing them in sets of eight because the boards are eight by 13. And I have to see how many pieces I have, how many are missing, where can I get those from. Hopefully I have enough material, I think I do, or my calculation says that I do, but we'll see once I go through this exercise. So after completing the dry setup that you see right here, I figured I have enough material for all the boards and some left over, which is good because if anything happens to the other ones, I have extra material that I can take things from. Uh, and if anything is actually left over at the end, I can make it into a smaller sized cutting board or a cheese board or a coaster or anything along those lines. I have to think about it once I reach the end, but for now I have to think about the gluing jig. The idea behind the clamping jig is that it should hold the pieces in minimum two dimensions. And by that I mean one way is this, to hold them all together. And the second way is to hold them flat so that there is no misalignment of the wood. 
long time ago and I mean really long time ago I bought those clamps <laughs> I bought those clamps and the idea behind those clamp is this you have two sacrificial pieces that get hooked on those little uh, uh, barrels and in between is your workpiece now let me see if I can do it with uh, So basically this is how the clamps operate, your workpiece is right in between and once you start tightening the, uh, the lever, it holds the pieces together that way. So let's see how it's going to fit here uh, and see if I'm going to be using them. Uh, the one thing with that is I need to buy a few uh, sacrificial pieces, like a few extra 2x4s from the local hardware store. Uh, so that I can make this happen, but that's okay. I will uh, probably go and do that anyway. So let's see how it works. And this is the clamp in action. There is the sacrificial pieces at the bottom and at the top with the work pieces being in the middle. And I am gluing them on the shorter side, if you recall my previous video. So once I start tightening in, I get the pressure that holds everything together. And after minor adjustment I'm using only one set of clamps so that makes it a little trickier uh, but after minor adjustment and continued pressure the uh, flat surfaces of the sacrificial pieces are supposed to keep all the wood nice and level at the top I run my fingers uh, I do feel a little bit of variance uh, but that's expected and that's nothing that the planer wouldn't take care of and that's why one side of these pieces are slightly longer for things like these. Now I'm happy with it, now I have to make more sacrificial pieces. Ta-da! <laughs> we have a successful dry run. Uh, the wood is nicely held together in both directions. There is a minor variance uh, which was expected and that's something that the planer will take care of uh, later on. I know it felt like a lot of work to create all those sacrificial pieces but in the end they are necessary because once I start cutting across the grain it will prevent the actual wood of the cutting board to get splinters like these. And for me that's time well spent. Now I have to focus on the gluing and my idea is to keep the wood in this setup for about two to three hours and then move it to my regular clamps and then glue in the next set of pieces. Uh, I have about nine setups like these to glue so that may be a two day process. So uh, <laughs> good thing everything is coming to a, the exciting end when everything is getting glued and coming together. So. Stay tuned for gluing now. <laughs> And the first round of gluing is complete and this is what a checkered board would look like. Uh, obviously I haven't taken clean edges or removed the uh, markings here so that kind of obstructs the view right now but this is the idea behind the checkered board pattern. Now I have to do a very similar exercise, take a nice clean 90 degree cut right here and then start cutting little strips. Uh, so that I can make the pieces for the actual boards. You know, it's a very similar process, just a different direction of the wood. Before it was along the grain, now it's going to be across. 
And once I'm done with those little strips, then I'm gonna take them to the planer to remove any of the excess glue and markings that are on the surface of the wood. Uh, and then it's gonna be time for more gluing. So without further ado, I'm getting to my machines. So I have been playing with the layouts, primarily using my floor because I have a little bit more space on my floor than I have on my workbench. Uh, and this is what a checkered board pattern uh, cutting board would look like. Uh, I do need to still uh, finish the uh, edges on the side to remove any of the glue squeeze out completely. Uh, but that's what it would uh, look like. Now, I think I was a little bit too liberal with cutting on the table saw, cutting the nice flat edge on the table saw. Uh, because not everything cut according to the way I want it, so I'm not going to have as much of extras as I was thinking. Uh, so probably I'm not going to be able to do the coasters or the candlelight uh, holders, but that's okay. My main concern was the cutting boards and I have enough and probably just one spare strip like this as an extra. So now we need to get back to the machines and machine all the remainder of the edges and probably tomorrow I will be starting gluing things again. And the boards are very near completion. And here they are, all nicely glued up. Uh, they still have the sacrificial pieces, but I'll remove them once I finish the top and bottom surface. Uh, I do still need to clean some glue markings and all, and so I'm gonna take them to the planer and then uh, remove the sacrificial pieces so that I can get the cherry and maple wood. Uh, I am showing in the video a lot less steps than what it actually took to create the boards. Uh, that's because everything becomes repetitive after a certain point. So I just left it to showing in the steps for one or two boards and then everything else is just the repetition of those steps. So there was no point in me putting all that footage where it's not anything new, not, nothing exciting happening uh, since the first or second board. I'm probably going to follow the same format for my next video, which would involve creation of the finger holds for every board. So that includes those six plus the, I think the 12 that I have there that are single wood ones <laughs> and the sanding. And of course the sanding is the worst part because I'm going through five different grids of paper and all the motions are exactly the same. Uh, so probably I'm just going to show one or two boards out of that. And I am hoping by the end of next week, I will start doing the oil bath for at least one board. But cross my fingers, I have ambition. I do know that things can take a lot longer than I anticipate. So we'll see how it goes. If you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe. And also hit the notification bell to get notified of my next video release. Also, follow me on all social media channels. All the links are down in the description.